Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hey, look, right now I'm thinking Bob Arum uh, is regretting signing Devin Haney because I honestly don't think he wants Lomachenko to fight Devin after Lomachenko's performance uh, this past week, uh, his most recent performance. And I'm just being honest with you. Um, one thing we know, Bob Arum and Lomachenko... Bob Arum goes on record. He calls these guys his friends. He doesn't talk like that about pretty much any other boxer. But you see that Lomachenko and Yusik? I don't know what it is about Bob Arum and the Ukrainians, but he he really has formed some kind of relationship with those guys that's beyond promoter and boxer. And I honestly feel when he, when he was bringing... Uh, well, they were working that deal between him, Eddie Hearn, and Ludabella to get Devin Haney over to his platform because Devin Haney wanted to fight Cambosas or fight Teofimo, and Devin Haney wants the big fights. I honestly feel that Bob Arum felt through attrition, even if Devin Haney got through Cambosas in the first fight, if he got through Cambosas in the second fight, I honestly feel Bob Arum felt that at some point, especially if he matches him up with Lomachenko, that Devin Haney would lose. So Devin Haney would come over. It is what it is. He has all the belts in-house underneath the top rank roof. But at some point, right there, maybe towards the end of the multi-fight deal they signed, and to be honest with you, I don't know how many fights are, are remaining, but we know for the foreseeable future, Devin Haney and Eddie Hearn, that relationship is over. But I honestly feel that's, that was kind of what they had in mind. Get him over here, fights, maybe he wins, becomes undisputed. But before he, he concludes um, the fulfillment of this multi-fight deal, this multi-fight contract, we'll get him in there with Lomachenko. Can't beat Lomachenko twice. Well, i tell you what, and, um, and I just got to be real. I think Devin Haney puts on a show against Lomachenko. I honestly do. It, it's, it's becoming a point to where... The odds are starting to favor, favor Devin Haney. And it's becoming a point to where this man keeps finding a way to win. How much longer are people going to root against Devin Haney? I honestly feel what we're seeing is Devin Haney kind of going through the pretty boy Floyd era right now. You know, there was a space in time where you had the pretty boy Floyd era, and then Floyd evolved to the money made. But that pretty boy Floyd era is where Floyd was just animal, dominating fighters, uh, doing everything right, timing. I mean, everything you can want as far as textbook, boxing, perfection, in the ring, you got that from Floyd Mayweather. And he got all the way through the end of his career, but especially before he said he started having the hand injuries and he had the retirement and all that bull crap. That guy was a monster. And for those of you who say, oh, uh, Mayweather, all he did was run. He was a boring fighter. That's, that's just bandwagonists. Those, those are just bandwagonists talking out their backsides. Anyone who really knows boxing, you know Floyd Mayweather was the truth. Knocking people out. I mean, just, it's just, I could go on and on about him, okay? But the reality is, towards in his career, okay, maybe he has some hand issues and stuff like that. But put it to you this way. With a limited arsenal, Right, getting up there in age, um, legs still not being as strong as they were during the pretty boy Floyd era, era, he still dominated everybody, made him look stupid with a limited arsenal. Okay, so if he did that during the, the point in time in his career where people consider him boring or he's running, I tell you what, well, then you got to give him credit. For that, but also, you got to respect what he did during the Pretty Boy Floyd era. And when I watched Devin Haney fight, I, I'm being honest with you. You could tell he came up in that gym. You could tell he spent a lot of time in that gym. He just he just got it. Now, he doesn't have the kind of pop that Pretty pretty Boy uh, Floyd had. That Pretty Boy Floyd was knocking people out left and right. But Devin Haney has some respectable pop. Um, you're not just going to run in on him being you know flagrant. So... It, Devin Haney can make you respect him. 
but he's not necessarily going to, you know, stop you in your tracks either, but he'll make you think twice before coming in because there's only so many beast things you can take, you know what I mean? It's one thing to get hit, kicked by a goddamn horse. I mean, you know, that's it. You're out of there. But Devin Haney's more like, you know, a wasp thing in it, you know, like, it's only, how many of those things you want to take before you, like, goddamn, you know? You want to get that off of you. And that's what's going on there with Devin Haney. But he was there ringside for the Lomachenko fight, and like I said, man, you know, as far as him and Lomachenko getting uh, getting it on in 2023, the odds have fav- fa- uh, has shifted considerably to uh, Devin Haney's uh, favor, and you got to you got to think that's the the right thing, you know. You can't argue with that because Lomachenko, yeah, we understand what's going on in Ukraine, the war, him coming back. Didn't really have the, the the training camp he wanted, and you know you got to understand his situation, and I feel for him. You know it's tough, tough. So we don't want to kick him while he's down, but at the same time, there's some things that he just wasn't able to do instinctively, and you know what, Lomachenko reminded me of watching him in the ring, where you could tell he's still a great fighter, he's still thinking in there, but he's just like a second slower because it's not coming instinctively because of the inactivity and whatever else is on his mind. Remind me of Keith Thurman. You watch Keith Thurman a couple of times he's come back to the ring to fight, right? You could tell he's still got it here, but he can't put it out with his body anymore. He's a, he's like a split second behind and he's thinking. And as a result, <clears throat> he's uh, been in some positions in his fights where he looked more vulnerable than what we were used to seeing with him. And it's the same thing that reminded me with Lomachenko. So I think Lomachenko gets in there with B, a C plus, C level, B level, B plus fighters. And I think Lomachenko can still handle his business. But when he gets in there with an elite fighter, I just think he's going to struggle. And Devin Haney, at this moment, he's elite. Okay? So with Devin Haney, he wants to fight. And he's, you know, I, when I hear these fighters, I'm like, if, if it makes sense, if it makes sense, then, then let's do it. Look, 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 look. Outside of Lomachenko, as far as a really big name, right, that probably isn't a huge threat, who can Devin Haney fight? Because Lomachenko is a, is a huge name, but I just don't think he's as big of a threat as Teofimo Lopez, who I definitely think uh, Haney beats him, um, Shakir Stevenson, uh, Ryan Garcia, let's be real, Ryan can fight. Tank Davis, Shh. Rolly Romero, Rolly Romero has that crazy style. I think Rolly Romero gives uh, Devin Haney fits, okay? Um, so when you look at Lomachenko, especially how he performed this past weekend, got to save for Devin Haney. Shouldn't be too much of a problem him getting in there getting that big name, Lomachenko's name, on his resume and getting a huge win and going on to the next fight, still carrying all of his belts, being the undisputed at 135. Okay? Now, the thing about this is we've got to respect Lomachenko because he's a former three, three-time world champion, and that's a big deal. But we are going to see just what Haney is going to do, what Bob Arum is going to do, what's going to happen with Lomachenko because sometimes... People still look at Lomachenko's record, 17 and 2 with 11 knockouts, right? And they look at him trying to go into a super fight with Haney. You're forgetting, Lomachenko didn't come in here and take 10 fights against tomato cans. You know, when he turned pro, he was ready to go. This man started fighting elite opposition as soon as he turned pro. So although he has he only has 17 fights, he 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 his record isn't isn't padded. He came in fighting fighting killers. And, um, and that's why he has those two losses. So you can't sit there and, and say Lomachenko's been cherry-picking. I don't think that's fair to say about him. But um, Haney went on and said that he knows that wasn't the best performance of Lomachenko. I think Ch- Lomachenko knew that wasn't his best performance. And at the end of the day, Bob Arum keeps saying that, you know, the fight's next. But I think deep down, he, he he's not going to be okay with Devin Haney finishing out this multi-fight deal with all those belts and going somewhere else. I just can't see that. You know, these promoters, especially nowadays, you know, those those belts are bargaining chips, you know what I mean? Those belts, 
uh, equivalent to money. So he's just not going to let uh, Devin Haney swoop in like a seagull, you know, drop off a bunch of crap, and then pick up the belts instead and fly back out of it. Like, he's not going to let those belts go back over to the zone. Devin Haney's goal, it looks like, is to start signing his own checks and following the, May the Mayweather blueprint. And that's what I would like to see happen for Devin Haney. Now, I don't know what he's going to do, who he's going to go sign with. He's going to do it himself. Hopefully, he's not going to pull a Bud Crawford and start asking for uh, <laughs> uh, the whole uh, the budget for marketing and stuff like that and unusual requests and start talking about he's his own boss and, and then start uh, uh, pointing fingers at everybody and poking everybody in the eyeball to make him look like a victim. Hopefully, we don't get that from Devin. But Devin Haney has a good team. And I just think when it comes to these these lightweights, man, you know, Devin Haney is a premier lightweight, one of. You know, Macheco, he still is, still got to uh, keep him in that category and be and be fair. But when you when you look at Devin Haney's last victory, you look at Lomachenko's last last victory, it's kind of hard for me to see how Devin Haney will be giving up his titles anytime soon to anybody. And that's just being real. So Bob Arum, we'll wait and see what's going to happen. But, um, you know, I can't remember how many fights Devin Haney had. I, I know he had a couple with Ken Bosos, but he had to win those fights. He won them, so he's out of there. Now he's going on to Lomachenko, that would probably be two fights. And then after that, I don't, I don't know. That's multiple fights, right? It's more than a few. But then I don't, I don't know what all he has. But I know he got in a in a in a deal where he felt he was getting screwed. But I honestly don't think they're going to let him get out of there. This is where I'm going to watch it, right? This is where corruption comes in. And I'm not saying that they're going to rob him. But what, what I am saying is, if he beats Lomachenko the first time. And then he has one fight left in this contract, right? Because I don't know how many fights he has. I thought it was like four. But then, you know, you read all these different articles, you know, and I try to go to the to a um, reliable source, but it keeps saying multi, multi-fight deal. But let's say he only has four fights with him, right? And he got the two out of the way with Cambosos, gets in there with Lomachenko, beats him the first time, and then he has a rematch, right? Say there's a rematch. Although he's a champion, he shouldn't have to give no one no damn rematch. But let's say for somehow they do the contract the way he gets a rematch. I can't see them letting him win that second fight and go on without his belts. I, I just can't see that. Now, if they're fair and he wins, that's what should happen. But if not, then, you know, it is what it is, especially if he goes in and he dominates, which is what he did to Cambosos. He even did it to Jojo Diaz. He, he does it to everyone, man. Lenaris, he dominated him. Yeah, he got caught, but he's dominating everyone, okay? And it is what it is. So... People still don't want to give him credit. There's something special about Devin Haney, and he's shown it. And he is huge. Devin Haney looks like he walks around like eating potatoes, man. Like that man live up in the mountains somewhere. He's eating bison burgers, you know what I mean? You see how big he was, the size of his head, his shoulders. I don't know about that damn sweater he had, that skeleton sweater he had on, but Devin Haney is a monster, man. And he's melts down to 135. And I, I don't know about that, so I, I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be at 140, but... Whew, boy. Excuse me. I don't edit those things out because I'm human. I don't know how much longer he's going to be at 135, but Devin Haney, man, has a bright future ahead of him. And I, I honestly think that uh, Lomachenko has nothing for Devin Haney. Devin Haney's going to have to put himself in there with, like, a Shakir Stevenson... Um, Someone who could rough him up and be real nasty, like uh, Rolly Romero, with his taekwondo background and all that. Devin Haney's gonna he's gonna be able to box and move around, but Rolly Rolly's gonna make it ugly. Rolly's not just gonna sit there and let you out box him. Rolly will get uh, one or two points taken from him uh, before he just sits there and allow you to just beat him down. Tank Davis will be a good fight. Ryan Garcia will be a good fight, but we'll see what the future holds. Right now, it looks like everybody's scared to match their fighters up with uh, other top fighters because nobody wants. They're fighting to lose, and they don't want to uh, be devoid of leverage going into fights because those O's matter and belts matter. That's the leverage. Those are the bargaining chips. But that being said, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about Haney and Lomachenko. If you want, make a donation to the channel. It's appreciated, man. Uh, super thanks out there. You have that option as well. I really appreciate it. 
But um, as always, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans. Shout out to people from all seven continents. And as always, I'm in the breeze.